In this segment, we're going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics applied to cycles. So first of all, what does the second law tell us? Well, it allows us, number one, to predict the direction in which a process is going to occur. So say you've got a cup of hot coffee and it's sitting out on the countertop. Is heat gonna be transferred to that coffee on its own and the coffee just keeps on getting hotter and hotter? Or is the coffee gonna cool down? Well, you know from just experience that the coffee is gonna cool down. But if you applied the first law, the first law would just say everything was okay, there's an energy balance, Q is equal to delta U, no problem, everything looks okay either way. But the second law is the one that tells us that heat is going to be transferred out of the coffee as opposed to keeping on getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Uh, the second law also tells us how much usable work we can get out of something. This is referred to the quality of the energy. So how much usable work you can get out of a system at a given state uh, for a process. It also gives you theoretical limits of performance for devices and cycles, and it allows you to figure out what you can manipulate in order to increase the performance of those devices or cycles. And there are other, uh, other branches that have used this, used the second law statements as well, um, outside of engineering, so chemistry, biology, philosophy, economics. So it's, it's very broad and, and far reaching. So the second law is a little bit annoying because there's not just one statement that will do all those things for you. Um, and these are the three most commonly used statements. We've got the Kelvin Planck statement, which is used, which is illustrated with a power cycle or a heat engine, the Clausius statement, which uses a refrigeration or a heat pump, and the entropy statement. Now we're gonna save the entropy statement. We're gonna focus on the first two for now. Okay, so the Kelvin Planck statement says that it's impossible for any system to operate in a thermodynamic cycle and deliver a net amount of energy by work to its surroundings while receiving energy by heat transfer from a single thermal reservoir. That's a lot of words. So let's sort of back up just a little bit and let's look at the picture here. So we've got a uh, heat, a heat engine or a power cycle and it's cycling, cycling along. And the Kelvin Planck statement says that Okay, so it can't deliver a net amount of work to its surrounding while receiving energy from a single thermal reservoir. So what it tells you is that you have to dump heat into that low temperature reservoir. You have to have some amount of waste heat. So that Q out or that QL has to be something other than zero. And because for any cycle, not just a power cycle, but for any cycle, the work net out is equal to the Q net in, which in this case is QH minus QL. What this tells us is that the work net out cannot be equal to QH because QL has to be some has to be greater than zero. All right, now let's look at a Clausius statement. It says it is impossible for any system to operate in such a way that the sole result would be energy transfer by heat from a cooler to a hotter body. So with a refrigeration or a heat pump cycle, which is what we're looking at right now, what this tells us is that we, we can't run the refrigerator without plugging it in. You have to have some amount of work input into this system in order to move heat in the direction that it does not wanna go from cold to hot. In other words, the work net in cannot be equal to zero. Um, and because for any cycle, the work net in has to be equal to the Q net out, which in this case is QH minus QL, it tells you that QH and QL cannot be equal to one another because the work net in cannot be equal to zero. All right, well, I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.